Welcome to Quantum Revenue Expansion, where we share time-tested strategies to turn your annual revenue into your monthly revenue. Ready to up-level your business and your life? Then you will love listening in on the lively conversations Ursula has with her clients and guests as they share exactly what they did to grow and scale their business exponentially. Plus, you will discover how to experience more freedom, joy, and peace in your business and your life right now. If turning your annual income into your monthly income is your next step, then join us at the next 2X Intensive. Go to UrsulaInc.co slash apply. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Quantum Revenue Expansion, the podcast. Super excited to have you back with us this week. You're going to love our special guest. It's Jessica Coonan, and she's with LaBelle Creative, and we got connected through my clients, through our community. Um, I kept hearing about her and just how awesome she is and what she was doing for some of our clients. So we finally reached out and it's just been so fun getting to know you and working with you. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes. So excited to have you. And you are also in the upper um, Midwest area. And so it's fun um, as my network has grown in this area to just be more connected to business owners like you. So in a minute, we're going to be talking about how to have quantum revenue expansion in the digital world. Quantum revenue expansion in the digital world. Doesn't that sound yummy? Because let's face it, I don't know about all of you listeners all over the world, our community, our family that we love so much, but sometimes it can feel like a jungle out there, right? Especially in the digital world. I mean, I don't know how many mistakes we've made in digital marketing and online marketing and funnels and like SEO and just so many things I didn't know. So I'm committed to bringing guests like Jessica to really dive into this topic and to help us. But before we do that, we're going to hear her story. But before we do that, a couple of housekeeping things. If you haven't yet, go to UrsulaInc.co, download Quantum Revenue Expansion, the masterclass. It pairs beautifully with the podcast and will give you that extra um you might be looking for right now. And it's free. And the course is designed to first help you get really clear on your quantum revenue container, like what is your next level in revenue? And then we talk about team and time, like what's it really going to take to get to that next level? And then we really fine tune your marketing and sales plan to make it even easier to get there. I also talk about collapsing time, which is, you know, kind of quantum, one of my favorite things to talk about. So if that sounds of interest to you and you haven't downloaded the course, I just want to invite you to do that today. And thank you to all those who leave reviews for us. We appreciate it. So wherever you listen, go ahead and leave a review. And when you do come back and go to UrsulaInc.co forward slash giveaway, and just submit the information there that you gave us a review and we have a little special gift to say thank you. So, all right, let's dive in. Let me tell you about Jessica. She is a marketing executive and strategist with 20 years of experience helping organizations from startups to Fortune 100 companies understand performance analytics and create impact through data-driven insights. Data-driven not just let's see if it works out, data-driven. Her ability to distill and translate complex digital SEO and user experience strategies into dynamic campaigns and programs has helped numerous companies create connections, drive leads, and get results. Most of all, get results. That's what we all want. And it can take a little time. It can take a little fine-tuning. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But before we do that, Jessica, welcome to Quantum Revenue Expansion. And Tell us about your story. I mean, clearly you were, you had this big corporate experience, you were killing it. And then one day did you wake up and say, I need something different? Like what happened? I, I feel like that happens to anyone, right? That decides, oh, I'm ready to go, go out on my own. I was not ready actually to go out on my own. I left and said, I'm never doing marketing, um, business development. <laughs> I don't want to make anyone money ever again. Um, and I wrote a book, I wrote a textbook, a best-selling textbook, because that's what I thought, you know, I'm here on the earth to write textbooks. That wasn't the case. <laughs> there was um, more, wait, there was more, wait, what was the textbook? Like, I'm curious. Um, so this is, it's a great question. It's also one that, um, I'm often like a little, so I am very like, I have these life goals. I'm going to check the goals off. This is my, you know, my life bucket list broken down into annual, monthly, weekly, daily. It's a little neurotic. Um, so I wanted to write a book yeah. and 
I was approached by a publisher um, through, I teach at a university here in Wisconsin, and they said, oh, this publisher has this library list, like a wish list of books they want to write. And I thought, ding, 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 I'm going to write a book. That's on my list. Check it off this year. Um, so I picked the one that was least depressing. They wanted one on infectious disease, you know, one on rape, one on, uh, there was just a ton of, and it's very, um, a very research driven, very academic, which is, I love data. I love research. So I picked the one on teen pregnancy because in the state of Wisconsin at the time, this was, I'm going to say seven, eight years ago, it was, it was a real um, concern. Yeah. And so I wrote a book, it's called the ultimate teen guide to pregnancy and parenting. And it focuses more on, um, that's the decision that teens have made. So like, how do we help? How can someone whose prefrontal cortex is not developed, um, which means executive functioning, that means planning and decision-making thrive as a parent. Um, so, I mean, experts from across the country were interviewed. We, I mean, like now we, I interviewed probably like 50, 60 um, teens and then also adults that had be, you know, had, yeah different perspective on it. So I did that and it was great. It's a bestseller. Um, wonderful. But through the process was like, oh, I don't want to write that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a no. It was great. And of course you killed it and it's a bestseller. So you can check fine. it out. Like, it fine. Like, check it off. <laughs> what's next? So um, and, well, during that, so during that time, it was probably, it did it in like a year. Um, I got approached a lot by colleagues from, you know, the bank and you know my wife my brother my cousin my nephew my you know my best friend is launching a business they have questions um or you know i got locked out of you know i own a franchise and you know all these restaurants and we can't get into our website like i can't you know more it was like panic calls from people i knew right. throughout my career and so i just started answering them. And after a few months of that and feeling like a massive martyr, cause that's I'm like a black belt, I love it. And yum, 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 yum. Like, oh my gosh, I'm doing so much for too many people. Right. I was like, oh, I should probably charge. Cause this is, you know, I'm annoyed that everyone's oh, asking yeah. questions like, oh, but there's an option for that. So that's when it started. Um, and I, I hated marketing. Um, and I think a lot of us have been burned. So when you work at like a fortune 100, fortune 500 company, I led marketing was a $450 billion division. It's a huge, we had one of the biggest marketing teams. Um, you're really working with vendors. It's, it's a, it's, you're kind of a vendor management ninja and budget ninja at that point. Not that we didn't have exceptional talent. We did, but um, that's, that's really right. Yeah. So we would, I'd sit in meetings um, and I was a young, I was a young executive. I was a young C-suite. I'd sit there and I'd listen and I'd feel so dumb. I'd walk out of the meetings being like, okay, like, I don't like, I feel dumb because a lot of times marketing people, the way they speak or UI UX people, um, I, the way they speak is like cognitive dissonance and, you know, these words, which are great. And I know them all and they're wonderful, but if I know them and I'm walking out feeling like a, just a, like the biggest yeah. loser in the world, I started thinking, do my colleagues feel this way, but they're not asking any questions. And so are we actually picking the best brand name? Is, are those the features that really will be monetized correctly? What's the user experience? Cause it all comes down to that, that will actually net the money or the clicks or what we want. So I started asking questions. Um, and it was, it was very quick. No one understood, like everyone was lost. Um, and so when I left and when I decided to go out on my own, that was a big for LaBelle Creative, that's a, that is a huge premise of ours. I say it and I mean it and our entire team does. We would rather be advocates than win the business. I have no problem um, just saying there is a way to do it, you, but there's so little trust with marketing um, companies and agencies and boutiques. So I believe you should not trust us or anyone from the jump, um, but we will tell you without 
you know, there's a way to do this. And I can, I'd rather tell you and you go off and do it and hire your right, you know, hire your team. It doesn't have to be us. It, we, everyone should play nice in the sandbox. There's more than enough money and revenue and stuff out there for everyone, I believe. For so sure. for sure. So, um, so we started with that premise and it's how we continue today. And what, um, what it's done for us as we've grown is I might have a conversation with you, Ursula, and you might be like, I am like oh, you know, like I don't, you know, and we'll tell you exactly how to do it. And you might go off and based on your budget and what you have in your team, you don't, you might not hire us, but we have now a trusted relationship that we've built. And those things are more important to me than, um, than the money or the numbers, because for me, money is it's more of a concept than it is like the numbers coming in. So um, it's proven to be a real, a really strong strategy for us, but also I believe like our clients can trust us. Like I, I don't take it, we don't take it personal. Like if the ads aren't working or something's not working, it's more like, how do we get it to work? Not, well, well that's what we, you know, there's no, right. try to avoid that. And I think that in marketing is really unique. Like, yeah. okay, I want to unpack a few. You said yeah. a lot of things. So yeah. <laughs> I love what you said. This is this is a tweetable moment. We'd rather be advocates than win the business. And you know, in my experience in working with you, that's so true. I mean, you're like you're looking at the whole business and you're like, here's here's what's working, here's what's not in the marketing or on the SEO side, here's what we can tweak, here's what your team could do, here's what you and so it's it's a very consultative approach and it's very, but also like you take the hand of the client because you know um, that probably what they've done in the past hasn't worked or hasn't worked very well, or they wouldn't be talking to you, right? Or they so, just don't know. Don't like know. You, I had my roof replaced years and years ago on my garage and I didn't ask because I didn't know for the, the, I don't know, is it like soffits to put back on or something? And so the roof gets done and I come home and there's no soffits. There's no, but they were there before. Like that was right. like that thing was, well, you didn't ask. And oh. it was a huge like moment. Cause I was like, this is why clients come to us and they're locked out of their site or their ads aren't working or because they didn't ask a question that they didn't even know they should ask. Like when you get a cup of coffee and you ask for one, the coffee should be in there. Like, so that's, we're real big on, again, there might be a cost if you hire us, but we all might, we might also just tell you, like you have, you have some talent, just tell them to do X, Y, and Z, um, you know, get the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> We have a soffit issue right now because I was like, this, I asked my husband, I go, why does this, what is that? And he's like, that's a soffit. I'm like, oh, why is it crooked? And he said, from the storm. And I was like, well, why did the insurance people work on that? And he said, because it wasn't part of the hail damage. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, apparently he, he did ask, but it bothers me every day. So it's making me laugh. Soffits are making me <laughs> really cranky these days. Um, but it's a great point of like, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what to ask or what not to ask. And here, here's a big thing too, or to back to your example earlier, where we feel stupid. Mm -hmm. So we're, we don't want to be perceived as being stupid because we might be really good at something else over here. And so why wouldn't we understand marketing to that level? Well, I'll tell you why. I mean, I ran a $20 million tech company and I was the least technical person in the company. I'm sure of it. However, I knew how to ask good questions and I knew the experts who could help my clients and I could put people together and I could figure it out, but it doesn't mean I'm technical. It doesn't mean I know the back end of SEO. So part of like this conversation today is letting go of the shoulds of what, whatever you think you were supposed to know about SEO or online marketing or like, who cares? Let it go. You don't know, soften it away, let it go. So you can show up and, you know, ask those questions. So, all right, let's, let's keep going. So you launched the business. You came really from this place of service, solving problems, which you're good at. Then you started to get paid for it. Was there a moment where like your annual income, like you either repl replaced your corporate income or your annual income became your monthly income for the first time? And then like, what was that like for you in that, in that moment? Well, so, so it's great. Like, it's always great. It also, I did, I, when it happened, I was like, I could have done this. I could have not 
traveled five days a week and worked 120 hours and like was like throwing up like four times a week because of the stress and the tension. And I could have just been doing maybe the same amount of work, maybe stress in a different way, but almost like with a better flow. And I just, that was more of, it was less of the the number because I had embraced, you know, I wrote a book, I love to write a book. That was like two dollars essentially you know like you know I had embraced that I might not ever you know surpass that income I mean I have I mean quadrupled is like a low number at this point you know like that that number is now like kind of like what I it's kind of funny now where I'm like oh that was what I thought was like really my ceiling and now for me like there's there's probably not a ceiling and how can I help other people, you know, understand and see that through some of these digital things, you know? Yes. Yes. So, yes. Let's talk about that. Let me yeah. jump. I'm going to go around. I'm going to go jump around a little bit, but yeah. so let's talk about income ceiling because I think for business owners, sometimes we don't even know we've hit an income ceiling until you, until your accountant or your CPA or somebody's like, Hey, have you looked at your P and L recently? Oh, wait a minute. And then you look at uh, what you're averaging over the last six months and you realize even though you had some big months, you might've had some lower months and you have, it's the same amount every single month. So what are your top two tips really for, you know, busting through an income ceiling? So I, so this is, this is a question like I'll have clients, like they will ask, like, how can I, you know, like we're, we need to make more money. Like, or we, we're not getting leads. Usually it's so we're not getting leads. Um, and what, what I say, and it worked, it's the same thing I would do for us or any of our, um, you know, business capabilities, our pillars, as I like to call them, is it's dependent on what you're doing. So it's dependent on your product. It's dependent on your service. Um, first of all, like service-based industries, professional services, retail, you know, an actual like thing is really different than consulting. Totally. Um, so, but generally speaking, um, I think the number two or three reason businesses fail is distribution. So that is always the key in not having the right people, not the number three, you know, like there's, there's like a top 10 list of why businesses fail. Distribution is huge on the list. So, you know, make sure in the right place, like are you doing well in this area? Well, can you expand your geographical reach? Can you target a different demographic? Can you reach out to new industries if that feels authentic and aligned with who you are? Um, if it doesn't, then what, sometimes what we think is a ceiling is just kind of that next stepping tone to the next level. It just might be a slower growth arc, um, but we'd have to look at it and think about it and see the data. I always say like women, especially probably aren't charging enough. Yeah. So I always, after distribution, make sure you're charging the right prices to the right audience. It's, it's different. We have, um, a spectrum of prices. We, we charge differently, um, based on the industry and based on, you know, I cannot charge a startup the same as a fortune 100 company that doesn't, the services are different. The scope is different. So just having one set price doesn't make sense. So that's what we, like, I try to talk about too, is look at your prices and also like, do you have a team, you know, a one person marketing agency, of course, they're going to be less expensive than maybe us. We have, we have like a full team. Right. Um, but when you need something, we can get it to, you You know, we, you know, our, we're not shutting down because one person's on vacation for a week. So, (laughs) right. Like (laughs) Um, Shelly's on vacation. So So we're done, you know, like, and I think for, you know, CEOs and for people who um, like you and I sometimes need something at a time that might not be convenient for a one person um, company, though the cost might be perfect for our budget, the availability isn't. So sometimes we have to just be aligned in what, in what those price it, prices mean um, and charge accordingly as the business. Do you have people? We'll make sure you pay them and then also get paid. Like it's, you know, that's okay. All those things. So charge yeah. more for sure. So like, especially our, you know, if you're 
a woman. Uh, it's, uh, let me I would look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only 3% make it over the seven figure mark. And that's one of the things we're committed to is really helping female CEOs tip over to that next level if they choose, right? Or not hold right. the belief that if I have a seven figure business, I can't, like I'm gonna work all the time and I'm, I can't have a family or, you know, all of that stuff right. that make up that story. But also distribution, that's that's really good because, you know, it's, um, well, especially during the pandemic, we definitely had clients who were faced with many distribution issues and, and that affected their growth. And they had to they had to expand to survive. I mean, the word of 2020 that I said, I would never say again, but I'm going to say it, pivot. They had to pivot. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'll never say it again, ever, uh, but, uh, but you did. So, all right. But so that's a great time. example, though. Like the COVID is a great example of how poignant and how instrumental distribution is to companies. So many shut down because they had one, one place to sell. Um, so, I mean, diversity is always, it's, it's huge in every way, but like distribution diversity is, if you want to grow and you feel like you've reached the ceiling, um, that is a place to really just start looking and being strategic about. Do some work. Yeah, for sure. All right. So then let's dive a little bit deeper into money mm -hmm. and revenue. Again, this, especially for women CEOs, and I'm not saying it's just for women. We have, I've, you know, I've definitely met men who've gotten stuck at income ceilings, but it's, it's a little bit more pervasive with the ladies. Yes. And so curious about like the biggest myths about money you've had to overcome or just like revenue growth or beliefs you've had to shift. Mm -hmm. So, so it, there's two parts to it. So I'll say, I'm going to say it, but then there's, for me, there's two parts. So the biggest myth for me was that money is linear and that our value is based on some kind of um, constraint, like the number of hour, hours we work is a big one for, for agencies in general, right. for most business, like we work X or we bill X. And um, so I think that most of us as entrepreneurs and business owners or we know that the second part isn't true. Like intuitively, it's not based on the number of hours we work. It's based on the value. We say it, we hear it. We, I feel like we know it, but the first part plays into that. So we hear things like it takes money to make money. Money doesn't grow on trees. Another day, another dollar. Well, money does grow on trees. You have the right idea. Bam. Like you're in a whole different income, the whole different world. Um, it doesn't take money to make money sometimes. True. It, 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 sometimes you need nothing but like an idea and like the right person and a little time. Sometimes for when we have clients come in they're usually startups, they don't have a big budget. Um, we'll just say time, you have the time. So you might not have the money to do certain things, but you have the time and that's going to help you. We've watched some of our clients grow um, two, three, four, five times over in less than a year, simply because they put some time in the right places. No ad dollars, no budget, zero, just their hours of their time. So that's not, it sounds like it's like we put in, the, but it's, it's not based on like four hours equal this. It was it, it just, it, that's kind of remarkable to me. So kind of I like think a compound effect, right? So they're putting a little time over here, but it had um, a big effect in their growth over here. Right. So I just think like money, I think of it as a concept. I think of it like as a river that flows. This is what I teach. I teach entrepreneurship. Um, I, I just say like, you want to just keep the river flowing. So where there's dams or where there's things in the way, work to get those out of the way. So it just, because it's like the value, the accumulation of money, it's non-linear. Like there's no limits. So it just keeps rolling. Just keeps rolling. So we have to like, that's what I'm constantly like, and I'll catch myself, not necessarily around the revenue because I love money. I love talking about money. It's like my favorite thing. Um, it's more, we're expanding, we're growing, we're adding people, you know, <laughs> just make sure I don't want my income to change with that. And, I, and that's a lot of business growth sometimes like, you know, your income. Um, so I just, I just tell myself it's not going to, and then it, it tends to, you know, it tends to work. So. It's amazing. Like it'll just keep expanding. Yeah. And that being in that, I mean, and that's why, that's why we called it quantum revenue expansion, right? Cause we, we believe that. I mean, money is just, 
it's a construct we make up. There's more than enough for everyone, as you're saying. I love, I like, we talk about the idea of the river too, just that, you know, get on the river. It's still flowing. It's flowing for all of you. And Rebecca Hall, one of the coaches at Ursula Inc., she talks a lot about the idea that even if you tried, even if you, like, if you look even in your local area, like, let's just say tr you tried to get all the business in your local area, you couldn't do it. You couldn't like, do it. You couldn't deliver the opportunities that are around you right now. And so it's like moving into that expansive thinking. So, so I want to make sure we have time, uh, yeah. Jessica, we talked, I mean, you've hinted, like you talked a little bit around, you know, we have a marketing agency, we have a digital, we do ads, we do online marketing. What, what do you wish people knew about digital marketing right now? Oh, I, I wish so maybe not new. Um, I, and I've said this, I wish we would drop like um, the binary nature of it. Like if this, then this, I'm not on Facebook, I'm here. Like I'm, I hate social media, so I'm doing none of it. Like I often say like, it's so much more fluid um, and there's, it's, you can hate it. Like people are always like astounded. Like I hate social media. Like I hate it. I hate it all. I'm not a self promoter. I love to be quietly in my office, just working. Um, you can hate it and you don't even have to do social media. You know, we have clients that don't, won't touch Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, but they do digital. It's like, um, it's like your digital ecosystem is how I like to think of it. You know? Yeah your brand is your digital ecosystem and you're in person and like, so you can build it in different ways. You know, that's a bit of the, like kind of that inbound, like it all comes back to your website. Da, da. To me, I'm like, okay, fine. But like people will find you where they want, where they are. So like, we don't necessarily always have to force them to come back to the website if they're somewhere else, you know, make it easy. Like, um, so I would just say, don't be scared and don't think that just because you're not doing one piece of the ecosystem means you're failing or you need to, I, you, you might not, you might, you might not, but it, I would look at the, the data. Yeah, really. Right. Like, look at the, like, really look. And, and again, like we're not having this conversation because anyone should be doing one more thing. It's really like looking at the business holistically on what's working, what would you like to grow? I mean, for us, I mean, I've been in business for a long time. We've done some ads in the past, but we haven't gotten serious about it. Like I've grown my business significant to a significant level before I've even gotten serious about ads, right? And so I think there's a myth out there too of like, oh, I have my business, like I have to, like you're saying, I have to be doing all these things you got to look at what's working marketing wise for you right now in this moment, like what's worked in the past, what could you do more of? And then maybe there's one more thing. Like what's that for us that it was that, I mean, we're doing, we're doing all the things. And then it was like, you know what? Heard great things about Jess. <laughs> want to talk. I just felt really called to talk to you. And I think, yeah. you know, following your gut instinct, following like where you're called and who am I being called to talk to? Who am I being called? Like who's pulling on, you know, like you kept popping under my head. So I think really following, following that intuition too, of who you should, who's, who you can work with next, but not in an overwhelming way. So mm -hmm. I know, I know we're almost out of time, I guess, um, final word, you know, final word for all the CEOs out in the world. Some of them who might be Whoa! having the most rocking month ever. And some others who might be like, it's summer and no one's answering my calls right now. Like what's your best piece of advice for, for everyone? So I, I got asked a question, we were in a, you know, all the heads of state around the table, um, third largest financial institution in the world, right? We're all, we're all here. Um, and um, the CEO asked what, you know, why don't people, why aren't we being more innovative? Why aren't we? And I was exhausted. I was towards the end. Um, I was just like, because a lot of it fell on me. A lot of it would fall on marketing. A lot of what it would fall on, um, how can we do X, you know? And so I was, I literally just went, oh, cause it's fucking exhausting. And he looked and I was like, oh, there goes my job. Like, you know, like, <laughs> and don't swear. Like I do, but like, I didn't then. Um, and he's like, right. It's exhausting. And that's carried me through the last like 15 years of 
like fatigue is real for us. Like it's a real, and whether it's decision fatigue, whether it's, whether it's something else, you know, um, it's a real thing for business owners for C-suites and it's lethal for creativity and innovation and growth. So you're more likely to accept and produce, like pursue new ideas, new markets, new distribution channels, um, new digital strategies, um, if your energy has been made a priority. So this is real for me because I have an incredible team and they are all high energy. And um, I've had a year where I've just been exhausted. And so Tess, she's our creative director, will email me like a fantastic idea. Um, and she knows if I don't respond in a few days, she, she'll call and be like, what's going on? Do you like, like, and I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm tired. So I'll ignore, like, I'll just, I know that we all do it in different ways, but when our energy, when we've made that a priority, in addition to operations and sales and our families and all these things that we have, we create efficiencies that we don't even see because I just need to say yes or no. Right, right. But I can't even, like, we can't even do that if we're so tired and so the idea of something new it, that there's so much that goes with it, right? If someone's like, if I'm like, oh, do ads, you know, or right. you should be writing like three blogs a week because your <laughs> content is so on trend and you might not even be writing the blogs, but the idea that you will have to like review the quote and the contract and then review the blogs initially for a few weeks or months. And then, so we got to kind of keep our energy for that protected and safe. It's a bucket. We don't want to drain it. Yeah, so true. I, it's one of the things. So our 2X intensive is, it's about 2Xing your revenue and shaving 10 or more hours off your work week. And we designed it because of this, like this specific issue, especially for women business owners, because the belief is like, if I grow my business, I'm going to work more. So it's like, what needs to go? Like, that's what we talked about. Like, what, like, what, what should we not be doing anymore? You know, or who should be doing it? Or maybe, maybe like some things just need to stop. And so, cause sometimes we're doing things just to keep doing them, but you're absolutely right. Like when you get into that, that fatigue or that paralysis, you know, you got to like, it's a check. All right. Like what, what do I need to do? I mean, it might mean maybe you do need a four hour work week. Maybe you only need a three day, three day, not four hour, that'd be right. Four day, <laughs> Tim Ferriss, Tim Ferriss, four hour. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's three day. Right. And again, the belief comes up that that's impossible because there's so much, but sometimes when we talk to our clients, it's like, what would, what would need to be true for you to only work three hours a week? And what's amazing is our smart brains will tell us mm -hmm. the hard part is like, we have to change. We have to make some changes and that can be the hardest thing. But I think that's a great, I think we got to keep talking about this, especially yeah. in a time when um, I always do a shout out for mental health, right? Like our mental health from a point of like, I've been depressed during the pandemic. Like, I don't know anyone who hasn't been, then we got COVID at our house. And then I think I have some form of long COVID. My husband and I were talking about, we're like, you know, is that, does that long COVID make you a little depressed too? Probably. So we at our house, like have had to really, um, uh, Tim and I've had to be in communication and our son, Luca, like, like, how are we feeling? How are mm -hmm. we doing? And then we have businesses to run, right? Right. And, and if we, you know, if, and sometimes like, it's not even like about shaving the out. So, so sometimes I need to add something like I need to add an hour walk in the morning, or For I sure. need to add, you know, a few extra glasses of water or maybe not sit in my chair for like six hours straight, aggressively trying to maybe, um, I, I heard a story. I, it probably was on Tim Ferriss actually. Um, and I don't, I don't remember who it was, but he would go on a bike ride every morning, 45 minutes and, there and like aggressively like bike riding 45 minutes to get to this, like it was a 45 minute, you know, ride, or whatever, he was, yeah. but he was aggressive. Like, and I think of this, like in my day, cause I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get everything done, you know, to da, 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 like check all this. Um, and he said one day he was like, why this is for my health. Like, why am I so like, like about concerned it. about like getting there, like in this 45 minute time. So he said one day, he's just going to take the ride just as long as it takes. Just, it took him 55 minutes. Mm. 
So it took 10 more minutes for him to just enjoy like every minute of that ride. Yeah. And so that's sometimes what I think, like, what am I, what do I just maybe need to add 10 minutes around and reduce whatever this internal. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it is, it's creating those containers. We, we talk a lot about with our clients, their, their ideal day, not mm-hmm. a perfect day. Like what's your ideal day. And one of our clients literally got it down and she runs a multi, like a $3 million online company. It's very successful. She now works 10 to two, three days a week, three days. And she's got two kiddos. Like mm-hmm. she fine tuned it to that point. And then she adds in all this other stuff as, to your point to feel great. Right. And so I think this is a perfect place to really close today because it's like, what? so let's like, what do we need to cut out and what do we need to add in so that we can feel great? I even asked my husband the other day, I'm like, if I had a walking desk and I put a treadmill under it, right? Like, would that work? He's a tech guy and he's, he runs tech for a big billion dollar corporation, but he's home because of um, COVID still, right? And they may never go back. But he looked at me and he was like, I think that sounds unsafe. So it's also like, there are solutions that maybe are a little bit safer, but I'm with you. Like for our listeners, like, what do you need to do? And so for our listeners who want to connect with you, Jess, I know you offer people a strategy session for a fee, but this is a, this is a place where people could get connected to you first. So if someone wanted to set that up with you, what's the easiest way to do that? And where else do you hang out? Where else can they connect with you? Yeah. So I would just go to our website. Um, It's createlabelle.com, but I'm not going to spell being probably in the show notes. We're going to put it in the show notes. Yeah. So that's perfect. Um, Go there, poke around. You'll kind of get a feel for us. There's a strategy session you can sign up for. Um, We are on Instagram. Um, We do a lot of posting um, to try and keep business owners just either new perspectives or funny or, um, you know, interesting approaches or things to think about. We like to just, we post frequently. We do fun mood boards in our stories just to feel good with color and music. all very fun because I, I often say I don't want to talk about marketing to people because we all know what we need to do. Sometimes we just need like a little info to get there. Um, so we're, we're there a lot. I'm on Facebook and Instagram posting about my rocks that I find in my yard and my kids. So that's probably less exciting for people. <laughs> best I want to know about my son would be very interested in the rocks that you find in your yard well very cool this is awesome so yes create labelle.com it'll be in the show notes um, and then all the other places to connect with you will be there as well so Jess Kuhn and everybody thank you for hanging out with us today we wish you your best year ever thank you so much I appreciate it yeah and to our listeners all over the world we appreciate you Thank you for hanging out with us here. If there's anything we could do for you, you could email us at contact at UrsulaInc.co. That's actually fastest because sometimes my inbox gets cranked up, but Trisha's always peeking at that one. So let us know if there's a topic you want us to talk about or if we can support you in some way. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Have an amazing week. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. And if you are ready to make your next quantum leap, let's do it. Ursula invites you to join us at the 2X Intensive. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. Don't forget to leave us a review on your favorite podcast app.